Hello, a great welcome to IES Tidy Guide tutorial. Myself is Jarajan P. This is tutorial number 26. In IES Tidy manufacturing operations are performed to connect various components of a structured steel connection. This tutorial provides the details of correctly implementing one such manufacturing operation, namely stiffeners. So let us start Idea Statica tutorial number 26. Please note that the link for the playlist for all previous tutorials is given under the description of video. So while detailing the structural steel connections, engineers prefer to use the stiffness uh, on two situations. Uh, the first situation is where they expect you know, uh, the transfer of a very large concentrated forces. And the second situation uh, where they go for stiffness is uh, where they expect some kind of a stability issues arising out of a higher slenderness ratios, especially visible in case of a very slender elements. So in this tutorial, uh, we will just see uh, how the various parameters uh, given in Idea Statica should be manipulated to suit the requirements and the positioning of uh, the stiffness. So let us see. For example, here uh, I have shown a simple uh, beam uh, column welded moment connection. So obviously we expect uh, the large concentrated forces to be transferred to the column flange at locations of the top and the bottom flanges of the beam. So obviously there is a, a tendency for the engineers uh, to provide the stiffness uh, uh, directly in front of these um, flange locations. So my sincere advice to all the practicing uh, structural engineers would be that uh, try to eliminate the use of a stiffeners. Uh, this can be done in many ways uh, because the main problem is that if you start uh, uh, employing the, the stiffeners, what happens is that it unnecessarily, uh, you know, pushes up the cost of fabrication. And also on the other side, it affects what we call as the workability of implementing uh, the structural steel connections. So we should go for the structural steel connections as and when they are found to be very much unavoidable and this has to be checked strictly through the calculations and not just by the practices okay so let us see the various parameters for here example you can see that uh, the parameters on the left hand side so these are the parameters uh, which the idea statica provides us so that we can position the uh, stiffness as per the requirements so let me just show you the stiffness so this is the so-called stiffener manufacturing operation which we are discussing today so uh, let me take you uh, through the various parameters so stiffness on member so where do you want to place your stiffness for example here i have modeled two members one is a column member c and there's a b member b i want to place my uh, stiffness in the column c and related to which member that means uh, you want to position this stiffeners okay on the column c uh, related to which member I want to place this uh, stiffness related to the uh, beam flanges B so I have uh, Changed my parameters related to as beam B right now the position is one very important thing in many cases what happens is We may place the okay the uh, stiffness uh, Just against the flanges of uh, the top flange as well as the bottom flange of the beam B and in some cases uh, we would like to provide it only on the top side and in some other cases so we will provide it only in those cases where we have a, you know excessive compressive forces to be transferred so here for example I have uh, made the position as both both means this will be positioned corresponding to the top flange as well as the bottom flange now let me just change it for example if I change the position as the upper you can say that yes we have placed the uh, you know the stiffness only corresponding to the top flange of the beam B so you can see the other side as well so this is how okay so it is placed only on the upper side so you can see that if you press position you can see that position according to the reference number right so here our reference number is B so we would like to place the stiffener at the top position of the uh, beam member B okay now similarly on the same way so if you would have placed it, uh, what I want to say that uh, at the bottom, let us just change to upper. So let me say that it's a, it's a lower. So you can see that yes, the stiffener is placed at the lower edge of the reference number B. 
and uh, there is also one more parameter that's a center okay yes this is a center so where you can say that this uh, stiffener is a okay, placed approximately centrally between the two flanges that's the top and bottom flanges of beam b okay and uh, here uh, there is one more provision that is uh, uh, both okay so wherein uh, we can place the you know the stiffness both at the top and bottom flanges of the beam b right so uh, this is how you uh, specify the position where do you want to place it whether you want to place it at the top whether you want to place it at the center or the bottom or you want to have it placed at both at the top as well as the bottom this is what we call as the position you can also mention here uh, okay, the material of the stiffener in uh, many cases you can also go for uh, the material like the normal you know the normal strength you need not go for a high strength place because they are uh, provided for the stability as well as to absorb okay uh, some uh, marginal amount of uh, additional forces so you can also specify the normal strength uh, plate material here you can see that uh, the high strength is as 355 is mentioned and here is the thickness so you can mention the thickness of this uh, stiffener plates and here is the uh, here is the location by location we mean whether we want to place it on only on one side of the uh, column column web or we want to place it on both sides so as you can see that here location we have selected both so when we select the location as both we mean that the, uh, the, st the stiffness are to be placed on both sides of the web you can see that it is placed on both sides of the column web okay so similarly for example suppose i want to place it only on one side what you can say that you can say that yes i want to place it only on the front uh, front side okay so you can say that yes it is placed only on the front side so this is the front side and you can see that on the other side you don't have any stiffness right and you can also keep it on the other side of the column that is uh, you just keep it as the rear okay so you can say that yes it is uh, shifted to the rear side of the column as shown here okay fine so then uh, we have uh, so we have the rear we have the rend, uh, front and now finally there is a, an end one so here obviously you will find that yes there is a command there is a, a error message that is a stiff one cannot execute the operation see look here i want to have it at the end but the problem is that this is not an end member this is a continuous member obviously that's the reason so in some cases what happens is that this corresponds to the topmost column point where and we want to place the stiffness on the top that means as a capping plate on the column so in that case you can go for the end so wherein you want to locate this stiffness at the end of the column member for this case it is not possible because we have defined not it as an end member as a continuous member right so we'll go back to we'll go back to for example uh, both so we want to have it both okay fine and then we have got the x position so what happens is that whenever we place the stiffness uh, the main problem that we always face is that it is a clashing with the other see this is a very simple joint okay maybe that there are beams that is you know getting connected to the column on all the four sides and there could be brazings gussets etc so in some cases we may find the placing of uh, okay the stiffener plates are tricky and we may have to move a little bit up and down so that we avoid the clashing with the other structural member components so this can be easily done through the positioning so you can see that this specify the position of the stiffener with respect to the end of the member for example here it is set as zero suppose let's just see what happens to hunt right you can say that yes so you will find that it is so yes it is almost got you know shifted by almost half the depth of the beam this is uh, i think that is the ipe uh, yes 220 almost i think that's a 220 depth so now let's just see what happens if we shift instead of say 100 200 probably that this stiffness should come approximately at the top flange of the beam so let us just quickly see see the as i told you, you know so the best way yes it is almost coming at the beam flange because this is a 220 depth so that means what i want to tell you is that by adjusting the position of the stiffness you will be able to avoid the, the so-called you know the fouling issues uh, during the structural detailing right so uh, <clears throat> so the best way to learn any manufacturing operation is you work on these parameters okay put different values and see how the graphical window responds to these parameters and then immediately come to the conclusion and then start practicing that's also very important okay so let us uh, take uh, bring back this exposition as zero this is zero okay so that is good enough and now <clears throat> we have another important parameter inclination in some cases what happens is that 
uh, rather than placing it, you know, the horizontal we wish to place it, say, at 45 degrees or some, at some other inclination. Suppose that this uh, stiffness, we want to place it, you know, at an inclination of, uh, let me say that 30 degrees. So 30 degrees. So you can say that, yes. So you can say that it is inclined at 30 degrees with the, uh, you know, the, the, the reference axis of the beam. So it is inclined at 30, 30 degrees. So if you just change it to, for example, say 60 degrees, you can say that, it, it yes, it gets rotated back. Okay. So means that, so this is how you, you can also, you know, model the so-called diagonal stiffness also through this provision. And then we have got the so-called offset. Okay. So offset is nothing but the offset of the, it is written here. If you just press it, you can see it's offset of the top edge of the stiffener from the cross section flange. So what happens as you can see here that we have placed, okay, look here. So we have placed our stiffener, okay, that is a extending, that is covering the full space between the two flanges of the column section. In some cases, what happens is that this, this column section may be too deep, okay. And in that case, providing uh, this much of a, you know, large length of this stiffener is uh, unwanted and it also consumes, uh, it uh, adds up to part of the fabrication cost. So in that case, rather than providing a full, full fledged you know, stiffener, engineer would like to provide only a small piece of the stiffener. And this can be done by means of this offset command, okay. So you can say that here, uh, just a minute. So you can say here is a width here. So this is the X position and the alpha inclination and offset. I will come to the width now, later. So offset, so let, let me just give uh, for the demonstration. There are two offset commands. One is the offset top edge for the top edge and offset for the bottom edge. Let us just see what happens. So under demo. So look here. So by this command, what we see is we are rather than extending the stiffener, okay? Rather than extending the stiffener throughout the column depth, uh, we are able to place it uh, locally where we expect, you know, larger distribution of the stresses. Thereby, here we can, okay, save a lot of material for the stiffness. So here uh, we have uh, arrived at this condition through offset. That means offset to the top edge of the stiffener is to the top edge. That means from this edge to this edge, it is 100 mm. On the other hand, suppose that we want to keep this piece, okay, uh, connected to the other edge. What we can do is that we can keep it, for example, this is back to zero and we'll keep the bottom edges as 100, as 100, okay? Yes, so you'll find that. So means that through this offset, it's a very useful, you know, the, the command, there's an offset, that offset, there are two offset, one is offset top and offset bottom, and this lets you, lets you to place, you know, the stiffness in the most efficient way, which you like, okay? And then uh, we left one parameter like the width, yes. So here, as you can see that the width is, uh, here it is uh, ended as a zero. So, so it means, it do not mean that it is zero. So here it is already going to you. Width of the stiffener zero means, the width of the stiffener is uh, directly taken from the cross section. Look here, so let me uh, bring back to the full stiffener by typing zero, yes. So now if you look into this, okay. Now, what about the width of the stiffener? Let me just uh, take it from the top top position. Yes, so you can see that here, this is the width of the stiffener, am I right? This is the width of the stiffener. And here, uh, idea statica, when we put a dimension of, for example, 0 mm, idea statica by default calculates the width of the stiffener based on the cross-section dimensions of the column, right? You can see that the edge is flush with the column edge, right? So this also we can change. For example, suppose that I want to keep it as a width of 75. So this may move a little bit inward. So 75, you can say that, yes. So yes, it has moved a little bit inward. So that way you can also uh, make the positioning of a stiffener of the required size, right? So then we have got a gap. In some cases, what happens is that we can also keep a gap between the stiffener, okay? The gap between the stiffener and the column. And this could be uh, from the consideration of the fabrication also. Here, for example, in this case, okay, if I just rotate a little bit, here you will find that literally there is no gap. Suppose that due to some reason we want to keep a gap, but at the same time, a gap does not mean that, uh, okay, it will not be welded. It will be welded. This gap will be of a smaller dimension. So let me say that, for example, I want to keep a gap of 5 mm. So let us see what has happened. Yes, you can see here, look here. Yes, so there is a gap of 5 mm. So if, we, if you want to uh, see it on the 
top view you can also have a look on the top view yes so here you can say that yes there's a gap you can see that there's a gap between the stiffener and the uh, flanges of IMM but still there is a, a connection between them okay so that's how what is meant by the uh, you know the gap so another uh, parameter is a chamfered so normally what happens is that so we know that most of the column sections so let me take a top view of this yes so look here so we know that uh, the, whenever we have got an I section this is not a truly a rectangle it's not a truly a 90 degree this is there is a curve here right so so here exactly we have a curve so in order to avoid the curve which is a which exists which connects okay which is a part of the both the flange as well as the web uh, we have to make a chamfer okay because this is basically is not a 90 degrees I mean just to do it on the other way because that will be more yes yes we are talking about this one as shown here it is not exactly a 90 degree here you are having a curved surface so in order to avoid you know the uh, the curved surface we may have to make a notch so for example if you don't make a notch so what happens this will be a straight 90 degree we have to make a notch by default so you can see that yes it is closed if you make a notch and you can also specify if you find that this notch is too small enough or you have got some kind of a piping uh, going along the flange okay you can make a larger cut for example suppose that i say that the chamfer is of a dimension say 20 okay so yes you will find that it will increase right so you can uh, place the chamfer, chamfer size in order to suit your requirement and the final parameter is the welding obviously and uh, we know that the uh, the stiffeners okay they have to be uh, welded to the corresponding parts for example in this case they have to be welded to the both column web as well as the column flange and this can be done normally done by the one-sided or two-sided fillet welds only in prior occasions we go for a butt weld in this case so for example in this case what we did is that we had gone for a firemom size double-sided fillet weld okay so this is which is what being what is being shown here so this is all about the manufacturing operation uh, stiffness so uh, the only way to uh, become more comfortable with the manufacturing operation is uh, play with this manufacturing operations and study okay how the changes in the par parameters are getting reflected in the graphical window so that you know what each parameter exactly means to the model okay so that's all for this tutorial so thanks a lot and